Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Ian bringing you another video in this AI series with the new Boston. So in today's video, we are going to stay out of our code editor and we're just going to work inside of the prompt layer dashboard. So prompt layer has a bunch of really cool features. Some of them we've covered in past videos. In today's video, we're going to cover the evaluate feature. So in a nutshell, what evaluate allows us to do is if we have a prompt or multiple prompts, and we want to pass a data set through those prompts and see what the output is based on those inputs, we can then run what's called a batch run, which will automatically pipe our data set through the prompt or through the prompts, give us the output, at which point we can score it manually as a human grader, or we can score it against a golden data set, what the answers should be, or we can have AI go back and look at it and give us an AI generated answer or, or rather an AI generated score. And so in today's video, we're going to look at the latter most of those options. We're going to have a additional prompt go back and look at the outputs from running our data set against our prompt. And then we're going to have it give us a score. So let's jump into it. Over here at the top, we have the evaluate button. This is at promptlayer.com, of course, and we've already signed in. So this is your welcome screen whenever you get to your dashboard. So up top, we're going to click on evaluate. And this is going to take us to something similar to this, except you're not going to have all this history of previews and batch runs. So the blue button here, new batch run, is going to allow us to create a new batch run. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what it has to offer. So in the top right corner here, we'll click on new batch run. Now we can give it a batch run name. So we'll simply call this one uh, Bucky's comments test. And we're going to select a data set. So the data set you can create yourself. This just can be a CSV comma separated values. If you export this from say a spreadsheet like Google Sheets or Excel, then you'll just have your headers up top and then you'll have all of your data in the subsequent rows. Everything will be comma delimited. So we'll go ahead and select a pre-existing data set here. But if you wanted to, you could click on new data set here and you could upload a CSV file. So I'm going to select Bucky's posts and we're going to use that specific data set. If you don't have a data set, you can always use one of these data set examples down here. You've got three to choose from and you can download one of those and pipe it through against one of your prompts. So I'm going to click on build preview right here, this blue button. And it's going to start me out with a single column. So you can see that this is the data set that I uploaded. It's got a handful of previews. There's actually 16 rows in addition to the few that we're seeing here. This is just kind of a truncated view. And so this is using an input variable called content. That's the top here. You can see inside the curly brackets, we have content, and then this is the actual content. So in your comma separated values file, your CSV file, the header would be content. And then each one of the rows in that column would be this data that you're seeing here or whatever your data is for your arbitrary data set. So then you can add additional columns. So you choose the column type, and this is where it gets really cool. We can pick a prompt template from one of our existing prompt templates. We can actually send the request through a custom API endpoint. So we can run it against any number of functions in an API that we've written, or we can use the human input option. So I'm going to choose the prompt template here and click on next. So the column name here, I'm just going to call this comment and then I'm going to select a template as the next step. And you can see I've got a bunch of templates already in my library, my registry of templates that I've created. So we want to create a comment. So I'm going to use the create comment option here for the template name create comment. You can do it by version or by label. If you do it by label, then you can go through here and choose which label. If you do it by version, you can just go through and select the different versions. The default, of course, will be the most recent version of that template. So I'll go ahead and save this. Now you can go through and change the settings if you want. Your template may already have the settings embedded in it, but if you want to be explicit about which model you're using, then you just click this little pencil here and you can customize your engine and parameters. You can decide which LLM provider you want to use. You can use a specific model from that LLM provider and so on and so forth. Once you're done with that, you can save it. There are advanced controls for things like temperature, max token, C, top P, frequency penalty, and so on. So once you're done with all of that, you go ahead and save it if you want to do the customize option here. We don't need that, so we're going to close that back out. I have to go back and add my column now. I didn't mean to close that all the way, but prompt template. Next name is going to be 
comment. We'll select our template here, create comment, default version, using version, save. Everything good here. Now you can see as far as the input variables are concerned, we have one called post underscore content that's being pulled out of the prompt template. And so we want to decide which column from our data set is going to be mapped to that input variable. We only have one, which is content. So that's the one that we're going to select. Now we can click on run column and it's actually going to run that preview against those first few. You'll notice that the rest are hidden and we'll be able to see those when we run the full batch. So right away, it's actually running this data set through that template. And it's coming back with brand new output from, in this case, GPT three and a half turbo. So now what we wanna do, since we have the data set that's been piped through the template, is we want to take an additional step, add one more column where we include another prompt template that's going to look at this output based on that input and it's going to provide a score for us. Now, as humans, we could also look at it and have a column where we say, okay, this is good. I'm going to give that 100. That's bad. I'm going to give that a zero. But we also want to see if we can automate this process and hand it off to generative AI. So let's go ahead and try that now. We're going to click on add column here, select the column type. And again, we're going to do a prompt template. Go next. Column name here, we can just call it AI score if we want to, and then select the template. From the drop down, I'm going to create comment evaluation. So this is going to be the creation of an evaluation of a comment by our GPT model. Everything else is defaulted, so we'll save that. Now, this is the important part here, the input variables. We have our comment content, right? That is going to be the second column. So we're gonna send that one over to comment. And then the next one post content is like we did previously, that's going to be the content. So the comment content is the output from our first prompt template. And then the post content is the input from our CSV data set. We can run this column and we're gonna wait for these scores. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my camera out of the way here for a second so that we can see this button right here for run full batch. Let's go ahead and run the full batch. Cause like I said, these four pieces of data right here are only part of a larger 20 row data set. So let's go ahead and run the full batch. That's that button that you see up here in the corner. And at this point, it'll give you a suggested name, or if you want to give it something more explicit, you can type something here. I'm going to go with the default Bucky's comments test, and that just has today's date. So I'll go ahead and click on create. So it took a moment for these to come back, but essentially what's happening is there are 20 rows of input data, and therefore the first column has to pipe all 20 of those input variables through the prompt template, sends 20 requests out to GPT three and a half turbo, waits for their responses and populates them here. And then in an order for our next prompt template to run with the scoring of the previous output, it has to do the same thing all over again, just on it's shifting the data set over to the next column. So it starts out with this input over here in the left-hand column, and it gets piped through this one. And then once this output comes back, now this one runs based on this output and we finally get these scores here. So we can take a look at these. We can see, okay, the comment here is it's so nice out today. And then the comment that was generated by the AI was, oh, I wish I could be outside enjoying it, stuck inside studying for exams. And then the score based on this input and this AI driven output is 80 from our prompt template. So you can go through these and you can see and assess, okay, how well is the AI scoring these outputs? That of course is gonna be subjective to you, the person that created all this. But in addition to all of that, you can modify your batch run here to have an additional column that allows you as the human to provide scores. So you can go in and manually say, yes, based on this input, this is very close to what I expected and therefore it's a 90 or a 95 or a 100. Or no, based on this input, this is not what I was expecting, so this is closer to a zero. So that would be the human output. This video, we're specifically uh, focusing on the AI generated output, but in future videos, we'll come back and show you how you can add additional columns for grading against a golden standard. So when you already have the expected output, you can see what the AI gave us and what it should have given us. And you can see how those differ or the other option 
is that you as a human can go in and physically say, okay, this is a hundred or this is a zero or anything in between that. So this has been making batch runs of your evaluations against your prompt templates with your example data sets. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Can't wait to see you in the next one. And until next time, peace.